Welcome back to The Watch List. I'm Nicole Pedalides, live on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Glad you're with us. We're talking about an IPO, NASDAQ debut for InVenture, trading under the ticker INV, a technology company. The company's goal is to found, fund, operate companies that offer transformative technology solutions. Why was now the right time for this company to go public? We want to hear more about the growth outlook. Bill Haskell's with us, CEO at InVenture. Congratulations to you and your team. Um, tell us a little bit about the IPO day. Why now? Yeah, thanks, Nicole. Uh, the reason we decided to go public now is that we want to be able to access the amount of capital required to fund not only our current companies, but future companies, and be able to hold majority stakes in these. We're evolving to an operating conglomerate, and in that model, our goal is to hold these companies indefinitely. So just having access to capital to support that, that model is what we're all about. So you're commercializing technologies. It's a strategic benefit to the companies you're working with as well. Tell me more about that. How does that work? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. So interesting fact, the top 100 R&D spenders globally spend over $700 billion a year on R&D, and a single-digit fraction of that turns into commercial product. So there's an immense amount of already well-developed R&D. So what we do is we partner with multinationals, and we find the technologies that they have created that meet predetermined needs in the marketplace, marketplace ideas that they have already discovered, but that they opt not to commercialize on their own. They find things that are strategic for their business or adjacent to their business, but they don't necessarily want them to become their business. So we actually take those technologies, license or buy them directly from the multinational partner. We build companies around those and get those to the commercial marketplace. I can give you some examples if you'd like. Uh, First company yeah, well, we started. I know that you actually. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I know that actually you were talking about working with Procter and Gamble and Nokia and actually taking that technology and using it now going forward. Tell us about some of that um, historical, some of these uh, companies back to 2015, 2018, 2022. Yeah, so the first company we started, uh, we launched in conjunction with Procter and Gamble. Uh, is a company called Pure Cycle Technologies, which is now a standalone public entity. And it's based on a technology to take dirty polypropylene and convert that into the equivalent of, of recycled resin, the equivalent of virgin resin. Procter & Gamble wanted, because they had committed to their, their shareholders and customers to provide sustainable packaging, they wanted to avail themselves of this recycled polypropylene, but they didn't want to be in that business. So we raised over a billion dollars, created a company, set up a factory to produce large quantities of polypropylene, and they're a customer, as are many other multinationals around the globe. Yeah. Um, you know, with the Celsius, the most recent, tell us about that one, where you took the technology source from Nokia. Yeah, this is a technology quite interesting. As you, I'm sure, follow the generative AI space, NVIDIA, Intel, AMD are producing these chips that are now just physically too hot to be supported by conditional air conditioning. You just fundamentally can't cool them. You're defying the laws of physics. So they've evolved to a liquid cooling technology and there are ver varieties of it. Excelsius has a direct-to-chip, two-phase liquid cooling technology that doesn't require any external air conditioning. Air conditioning requires about one third of the energy to run a data center. And now we can convert that energy that formerly went to cooling directly into computing power to really optimize the output of a, a traditional data center. So very exciting. I believe we lead the market in it. We have about you know, one third of the, I'll call it mind share globally. And we're working with virtually all of the big players in that space. Very exciting. I'm not surprised. I mean, I feel like we should be hollering, breaking news, breaking news. The data centers don't need quite as much energy as first thought, because you're talking about and saying that a third of the energy comes from just air conditioning, and you have the liquid cooling solution for the servers. Um, how close are you to working with data centers around the states? I'll start with the United States of America in getting your technology into each one of these data centers. 
We're already delivering solutions into the marketplace as we speak, Nicole. Uh, we started this company in June of 2022, and in you know, a little over two short years, we've taken it from really just concept all the way through to commercial reality. So we're literally delivering systems into the marketplace as we speak. I see, all right. Well, in the meantime, um, are you currently working on new technology that you can source from other big names that we know? We have about a dozen multinational partners that actively show us technologies. We're very fussy about what we pick. We have a very rigorous process to, I'll call down select the technologies and only pick those things that are both disruptive, that we have good, uh, I'll call it an IP protective mode around, that give us sustainable differentiation. So it's, it's really a very low throughput model, but um, we focus principally on industrial technologies. We do have some things on the drawing board. I'm not ready to announce what they are yet, but we do have a number of things that are quite exciting that'll, that'll become the next you know, fourth, fifth, sixth companies of InVenture. Yeah, looking forward to that. What kind of timing are we talking about? This year? Our goal is to be able to produce a company a year. I think it's, it's reasonable to expect in the next quarter or two we will announce a new company. That's a big deal. In the meantime, trying to get everything to that $1 billion goal, right? How did you come up with that number? Well, we've built a lot of companies over the years. I've been, been involved in about know, 16 or 17 startups from zero to commercialization. And what we find is it, really it's an opportunity cost thing. It takes just as much effort to build a $50 million company as it is a billion dollar company. So for us, we, since we're only gonna do you know, a company or two a year, we really wanna focus on things that really move the needle for our shareholders. So a billion dollars is, yeah. is really the, the milestone that sure. we put in place. Most of the things we look at just can't achieve that kind of scale. Yeah, small business entrepreneurs should be listening. I mean, you know, it's basically, <laughs> I understand what you're saying, because if you're throwing a party for 20 people, you might as well throw it for 100 people. I get what you're exactly. saying. It's the same sort of concept, but getting it on a bigger scale. Um, last but not least, you did mention AI briefly. And um, how is AI helping you? Well, again, the demand in the AI space, I would say we're the, we're the people that are providing the picks and shovels to the coal miners, the, the equivalent of that, really the infrastructure to support AI. We're not in the software right. uh, domain or really in the industrial side. So as demand but increases it does create a lot for of other AI, you have more demand. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Well, indeed. congratulations. Yeah. You're ringing the bell today, right, at the NASDAQ? We, we are indeed. The closing bell today is, is the InVenture team, and they put a lot of uh, sweat equity into getting here. Yeah, Bill, we'll have our eyes on you at the closing bell. Thank you so much for being here. Come back with that announcement. We're, uh, we're going to be keen on that. Bill Haskell, CEO, InVenture. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Congratulations.